just reacting as a, you know, we study retail, we, we're into, into this, and I just think it's, it's more than measuring brand engagement. It's just, it's a leadership play, right? So understanding who your guests really are and what they care about um, and tapping into those emotions in a way that um, it's a perfect example of blending the science and art of marketing in a unique and, and wonderful way and not so much worrying about predicting the outcome, just curating the choices that, that your shoppers and your consumers make. So um, I was inspired by it. Our next speaker, Rob Schwartz, uh, comes to us. He's, he's CEO of New York, uh, the TWBA Chiat Day New York's office. Uh, he started out as a novelist. So uh, talk about telling stories and being the, the power of a storyteller. Um, became a, a copywriter. Uh, and he started out uh, thinking, well, what does a good novelist do? A good novelist knows the end of the story before he writes the beginning, right? Now, I don't think necessarily, uh, going back to, to REI, that they necessarily knew the end of the story, right? Um, and the difference, I, I, I think, in marketing is that sometimes we don't know the end, right? But we know how to start it, how to spark the fire. Um, Rob's going to talk to us about how the most successful brands have a story baked in, baked into their brand DNA, and that underlie the culture of the, the user and the guest. That, Rob. All right, I'd like to clarify one thing. I was a failed novelist. That's why I got into advertising. But uh, what, what a great venue. So thank you, Tracy, and the, and the team here for, uh, for having me. And, um, yeah, I'm going to tell you some stories. And I think what's interesting about the word story, we've said it about 63 times uh, so far in the event I've been, I've been counting. So that's an important word. But what's interesting about stories is that a lot of you, I just I saw, when I said the word story, you actually looked up from your phone. So something happens. So I'm going to tell you the world, uh, the seven stories that rule the world and the world's best brands. Now, at uh, TBWA, we have a, a chance to work with some of the world's best brands. We work with uh, Gatorade, with the PepsiCo folks, and uh, uh, Apple since uh, going back 1982. Uh, a bunch of other amazing brands. So we, 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 we get to practice uh, telling great stories. And uh, we told some very famous stories. You may have seen that uh, we talked about Super Bowl advertising. We uh, created 1984. Uh, some nice work with uh, Derek Jeter. Uh, I don't know if you remember Berries and Cream. Uh, that was a moment uh, for some other brands as well, Nissan and Michelin. So we, we like to tell stories. Um, this is the ugliest slide uh, I've ever uh, created. And I wanted it to be ugly because just in the last, uh, I think, four days, as I was really, really phoning in on this presentation, uh, I just, just started looking for uh, conversations about brand storytelling. And it's, it's everywhere. You, you can just uh, pick up any trade magazine. Uh, uh, beyond that, uh, everyone wants to figure out how to tell brand stories. And uh, when I looked at Google Trends, uh, as again, I started as a copywriter, so this is about as uh, scientific as I can get. Uh, you start to look that uh, around 2004, it's something you know piqued our interest on storytelling, and then around 2010, again, something else happened. You start to see this trend line of, uh, of telling stories. So uh, it got me thinking, and I've been uh, playing with this notion of you know these stories. Like like like, is there something? Is there something even more scientific about storytelling? And I, and, I, and, I, and I started to look for things, and I found this incredible book called uh, The Seven Plots by a guy uh, who I was really happy to note that he's beyond these IVs. He's an Oxford guy, so uh, maybe, Simon, you'll, uh, you'll appreciate that. But uh, he wrote this book, and if there's anything that you'll appreciate is that you don't have to read it, because this was a heavy read. This took up a lot of memory on my, uh, on my device. Um, but uh, a very interesting book on the seven stories. And uh, what was interesting about it was that uh, he laid out these seven frameworks uh, and, uh, he, uh, you know, for, for storytelling. And I'm going to show you that uh, whether it's uh, uh, Hollywood movies or it's uh, um, uh, novels or what have you, or brands, frankly, it's these seven stories. So just for a moment, let's take a look at these seven stories. This is really important for you guys uh, as you look at your work and what you do. And I can promise you that any one of these um, stories, even uh, Puppy Monkey Baby, is one of these stories. So uh, Overcoming the Monster, Quest, Voyage and Return, Rags to Riches, Rebirth, and then there's kind of a catch-all of tragedy and comedy, but I'm going to show you how we can sharpen that a little bit. So these seven stories, and I'll give you a bunch of examples uh, as we roll through. Uh, what was interesting about his um, 
his theory was that whether it's Shakespeare or whether it's Steven Spielberg or whether it's Steven Soderbergh or whether it's Sofia Coppola, I finally got that S of a woman. I was looking for a woman S. I wish I had it though when I made this slide. Uh, whoever the storyteller is, one of these seven stories is what they built their story upon. And as marketers, as we think about brands, we might be able to use one of these seven stories to tell the story of the brand. So if you're working on something now and you're stuck, I really hope that at the end of this presentation you go, you know what, I want to do one of those stories. Maybe, maybe we can use one of these stories. Uh, what I'd started to find out was that, uh, you know, stories are memorable. We, you know, we heard some great stories today. I think uh, in a professor, uh, uh, the first professor's uh, presentation, he told six stories, six business stories, because uh, that was more memorable than, uh, than a litany of bullet points. Something interesting that uh, uh, the, the guys at uh, Harvard uh, looked at was that it was chemical, uh, that, that, that something happens to your body. When I say, oh, I, I have to tell you a great story, all of a sudden something, I don't know, that dopamine, something happens to your body and you lean in and you want to hear that story. So it's chemical. Now whether or not you rate Harvard, that's your thing. Um, the guys at Princeton, though, they also uh, you know, found something anthropological and it does go back to the cave. And uh, when there was this moment where there were these giant dinosaurs, in order to stay alive, somebody said, hey, let me tell you a story about how this all works. So memorable, chemical, and tribal, there's something in us uh, innately that we like stories. So uh, what we'll talk about today is, uh, we'll, I'm gonna share with you Overcoming the Monster. I'm gonna show you uh, uh, some of this from uh, uh, T-Mobile and Tesla. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Quest. I'm just gonna show you, just again, just a few snippets um, from uh, Nike and, and, and Virgin. Uh, Voyage and Return, you'll see, with Disney and Airbnb. Uh, Rags to Riches uh, with Chrysler and H&M. Red Bulls come up today. We're gonna talk about Red Bull as a rebirth and then tragedy and comedy with uh, um, Volvo, Allstate, and then Adobe. I, I wanted to find a B2B example. Uh, there's some other great uh, um, humorous examples that uh, we'll go through. All right, so first is Overcoming the Monster. Um, and this is a really good story. Um, uh, you'll see that uh, a lot of great brands use this. I think we were talking at lunch. This is the original Apple story, Overcoming the Monster. This was Apple against IBM. Um, what Overcoming the Monster is, and again, this, this, this is uh, derived from uh, uh, Christopher Booker's uh, book, is that the, uh, the, the hero is on a crusade to overcome an enemy, a competitor, or a wrong in life. The guys on the rowing team that, that Simon showed, they were overcoming a monster. They were really, no, actually, no, they're, 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 they're more of a quest. Let me come back to them in a minute. This is Overcoming the Monster. And probably the best Overcoming the Monster story, the most famous, is David versus Goliath. I'm sure all of you know this one. Uh, pretty much the plot of any James Bond movie is overcoming the monster. Anyone named Blofeld is a monster. Uh, literally, I, I watched uh, two James Bond movies. I was on a, I was on a, a flight to, to Paris this week. I watched Back to Back Spectre and the, the other one. They, they all blend. But each one is overcoming the monster. And Spotlight. I think when you look at Spotlight, this is overcoming the monster uh, and you know, true monsters in the world, uh, you know, these, these horrible pedophiles. So a brand can be on a mission to conquer industry injustices like T-Mobile. The monster for T-Mobile, as you're going to see, uh, is big telephony. Uh, and the brand can be on a mission to conquer monsters across different industries, and that's what Virgin's doing. So I'm just going to show you two examples of, of overcoming the monster. Um, so for T-Mobile, this is the story of the, of the uncarrier. It's the underdog. It takes on the monster. It's the out-of-touch telecommunications uh, business. Um, and they position themselves as the uncarrier. And the uncarrier is basically David in a world of Goliath. And what they said was that they're still, they're still a wireless carrier, they're just not going to act like one. And the way they behave is that they listen to customers, they listen to frontline employees, and then they just do what those two, uh, uh, those two, two entities say. And uh, there you see it uh, in you know, some of their, uh, their marketing. But what's interesting is that they've, this guy's a, a hero, this guy John Leisure. He's really, he's really incredible what this guy's done. He was a, you know, a Harvard-trained MBA guy. Uh, he took on this job. He went to a customer services center, and he was horrified. And he literally said, I must take on this monster that is the ridiculousness of the phone company. And he's you know, got this kind of very interesting branding uh, that he's starting to do with himself. Um, and what he's done in Overcoming the Monster, I mean, he, he, like, he, he writes, he's a, they do all kinds of crazy stuff now at T-Mobile. It's not my agency, it's just uh, something interesting that, that, that we've been seeing. Uh, you know, this is a breakup letter to Sprint uh, for, for customers. 
Uh, this was really interesting. They, um, uh, they flew over uh, the, uh, the Verizon headquarters uh, to say end over just now. Verizon is their, their Goliath that they, were, that they were hitting. This is my favorite. This was a, uh, a drinking game that they created uh, during an AT&T earnings call. So anytime AT&T came up with something, uh, you, you could take a shot of something. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, and uh, again, they're, they're getting results from it. Uh, and again, somebody th this morning really wanted to know, you know can, can this stuff sort of drive real, uh, real results? And they're really uh, you know, adding to their, uh, their, their customer base. Uh, lots of brand satisfaction. Um, J.D. Power's up. So uh, I'm going to show you another story, which is Virgin. And again, I think we, we, we all know the, the Virgin story. But again, when you look at it in this context, what Branson has done so successfully is that he's found these monsters out there, and he takes them on. Um, uh, here, the, you know, he's his savior. He seeks out monsters in out-of-touch, impersonal industries. Um, and as he says, uh, the time to go into a business is when it's badly run by others, when it's really starting to wreak havoc. Um, and again, just, just a quick look, what, what, I, what I thought was very interesting about uh, this, uh, this notion for Virgin is that when you look at the right, these are all the industries, these are all the monsters and problems that they take on, whether it's mobile, whether it's money, whether it's trains, uh, whether it's wines. I mean, they, he finds the, the, the things that are destroying customers' lives and then takes them on uh, with, with, a, with a better idea. So just quickly on Virgin, and it was pretty good. In fact, uh, Virgin America just sold for $4 billion. All right, second story is Quest. Uh, the hero sets out to find or create something big, impossible, wonderful, and often with companions. Uh, so Lord of the Rings, I'm sure you know that. It's a quest. Indiana Jones, uh, this, you know, this was a quest. Uh, if you look, go back to the original uh, intent of Breaking Bad, the quest, he needed money for his wife's cancer. It was a quest to get money. Of course, it went really crazy after that. Um, what we've found is that there's brands that champion your quest, like Nike, and then there are brands that are hell-bent on their own quest, like Tesla. So again, when you look at the, the core of Nike, uh, it goes back to you know, one of the best pieces that, uh, that, that uh, Wyden and Kennedy created for them, which is there is no finish line. That as an athlete, you are on a personal quest uh, to be the best you. Uh, and you start to look at the work. So the, the previous ad you saw was written in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the early 80s. Find Your Greatness, just written recently. Again, a quest. Uh, write the Future, a quest. Uh, and the quest worked out pretty good. Uh, you know, victory in and of itself, going back to the, the, the rowing team, this is usually a quest to win uh, some sort of uh, competition. And Nike is uh, clearly winning it. I think on the flip side, you can look at Under Armour is now trying to overcome the monster that has become Nike, if uh, that makes sense in this context. Tesla, I think, is very interesting, too, because uh, Elon Musk is on a quest. He's on a quest to, to make the world better. Uh, the story of a man on a quest to change the way we drive, heat our homes, commute, and live on planet Earth and points beyond. He's really interested in us doing some real estate in Mars. So what I found interesting, too, is that when you looked at his book, uh, a, a best-selling biography, uh, Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, and the quest for a fantastic future. It's already written, writ large, literally written. Uh, and he's got these three interesting uh, companies he's got, uh, SpaceX, Tesla, and SolarCity. Now, what I also want to bring up is, this is my boss, this is uh, Lee Clow. Um, he's the guy who worked on the original 1984 uh, commercial. Uh, he has this uh, idea that everything a brand does is an ad, which is why you may find it interesting, oh, here's an agency person talking about things, but there's no advertising. What's, what's happened to our world, and I think what you saw in a lot of the presentations today, certainly REI is in action, everything that the brand does is part of the story. And you need that overarching story. You need that, hey, we're going to be overcoming the monster. So when you start to think about T-Mobile, all the actions that they take are overcoming the monster, some of which may be advertising. Tesla, it's in the products. The quest for a better future is in the products. It's in the cars. It's in the gigafactory. It's in this Hyperloop. Uh, it's in, again, with SpaceX, we're going to actually go to Mars. There's going to be a, a, a Vail resort in Mars. Maybe that's the next property you can think about. <laughs> they got mountains there. Uh, what's also interesting is that when added value polled 7,500 respond, uh, respondents and identified the most vibrant US brands, Tesla is number one, above Google, above Amazon. And what you're going to start to see as I talk about this is that brands where the narrative, this idea, this story is clear, people connect to those kinds of brands. He's there on time now. 
And I love this, so when uh, the Economic Forum asked, you know, which leader do you admire most? Okay, Nelson Mandela, the guy from REI, it's not in there, I don't know why. <laughs> Pope Francis, and then Elon Musk, right above Gandhi. So, there you go. Third story, voyage and return, I'm going to pick it up here. Uh, so, a visit to another world or microcosm, a return home changed. You know this one, Wizard of Oz, every episode of Star Trek, they go somewhere. They come back, the Martian. And uh, these brands transport you to another place. You can enter as a foreigner passing through life like Disney. I'm going to show you a very obvious example of Disney. And now someone who tweaks it, one of our clients is Airbnb. Now Disney, the story of pushing the imagination of what a voyage can be and bringing that voyage to the masses. So all these stories that Walt Disney created, these now have become destinations. You can go into these stories. Uh, and that's the magic of Disneyland. You get to go on a voyage. And when you come back, you're never the same. Some of the marketing that was done for this. You know, you're part of this story now. And it's working. The parks themselves are the number six, uh, the top six destinations in the, in the, of all parks in America happen to be Disney parks because people buy into this story. They like it. It's simple. I wanted to show you this. I thought this is really interesting. Um, this is basically Synergy, but it was written in 1957. Just a segue. I liked it. It's a cool chart. Um, when you look at what Disney's doing, additionally, though, they're also acquiring other companies that take people on journeys. So when you look at Marvel and uh, Lucasfilms and these others, they're all in on the, uh, on the idea of a voyage and a return. And they've had a lot of success when you look at uh, the most powerful brands, according to this survey, with uh, Disney right there on top. Now, Airbnb is taking this you know, very classic notion, a very obvious notion of taking a journey and coming back different somehow, but they're modernizing it for the 21st century. And uh, we just launched a campaign called Live There. And again, it's, it's, just, it's just a very modern way that it's materializing. I'm going to show you an old school TV commercial, but then I'm going to show you what we're doing uh, with it after. Don't go to Paris. Don't tour Paris. And please don't do Paris. Live in Paris. When you Airbnb in Paris, you have your own home. Make your bed. Cook. You know, the stuff you normally do. Don't go to LA. Don't go to New York. Don't go to Tokyo. Live there. Live in Malibu. Live in the East Village. Live in Shinagawa. Feel at home. Anywhere. Do your regular routine. Wherever you go, don't go there. Live there. Even if it's just for a night. So again, it's still the promise of travel. It's just a different way to do it. And it's, it's just uh, what, what's starting to happen. So live there versus just go there. But it's still the promise of a voyage uh, and a return couple other things we're doing. Uh, and then what's nice about it is that you start to get into what the host likes to do in this part of the world. So it makes your voyage uh, more enchanting. And uh, just, some, uh, just some great facts about what's going on here with, uh, with Airbnb. Really, really doing some wonderful stuff. Um, and and you know, the, the, the reason is that people get this. We want to go on these wonderful journeys. This is just a new way to do it. And because Beyonce, she goes to Airbnb. Story five, rags to riches. Uh, an ordinary, insignificant person dismissed by everyone who suddenly steps to the center of the stage and is revealed to be someone quite exceptional. Any Dickens story is this. Uh, Cinderella is this, rags to riches. Uh, Aladdin, rags to riches. Forrest Gump, great rags to riches story. Um, the Chrysler story, I think it's, it's, it's sort of off the rails now a little bit, but when they launched uh, with Eminem, this was really a rags to riches story. Uh, and uh, it's the story of an auto company that everyone gave up on during the financial crisis, and the company comes back strengthened by its humble beginnings. It's really a rags to riches tale. Uh, and if you'll recall that, uh, the, you know, the famous uh, film with Eminem, um, uh, &M, you know, we wanted to buy into that story that, wow, people from Detroit can make a luxury car, that a, 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 an impoverished place can make a beautiful thing. We wanted to buy into that story. Uh, and at that moment in 2011, uh, you can see just the spike in interest uh, of that brand suddenly. Yes, a big media buy, but also a story that people were connecting with. 
Uh, we, we work with H&M as well. Again, another uh, interesting brand. Uh, it's, it's a Cinderella story, a fairy godmother who can dress you in L'Envin, prepare you for a night out or for a job interview. And again, what's nice about what H&M is doing is that they're basically taking what's on the runway and bringing it to everyone or showing people like Michelle Obama, she wears H&M, you can wear H&M too. It's rags to riches, you know, quite literally, whether it's Lagerfeld or Versace. Uh, even in the recruiting uh, work uh, that we did with them, uh, we didn't just sell a retail job. We, we sold a career, the, the promise uh, that you can do more than just get a job in a retail store, but you can actually have a career. Your rags, your, your humble beginnings can actually lead to, uh, you know, to, a, to a greater life. Doing well on Interbrand, number 21, not too shabby. Story five is Rebirth. Uh, and this is about uh, transformation. Uh, it's a dark spell, keeps the protagonist trapped in a wintry state, only when the right moment and the perfect hero, uh, and in the right moment, the perfect hero arrives and can be liberated to a new place. And this is what you've seen, of course, with Sleeping Beauty. She gets kissed. And you also see it with um, The Wrestler. They have the same hair, Sleeping Beauty and The Wrestler. <laughs> but when you think about that film, you know, there, was, there was a rebirth, you know, that, that, uh, you know, that uh, the Mickey Rourke character could uh, be a champion again. Um, and this is what's happening with Red Bull. So Red Bull's very interesting. It's come up today, so I'm glad we can spend just a, a brief moment on Red Bull. Uh, we phrase this as, you know, this is the story of an energy company that, ha that just happens to sell beverages. Uh, and this idea of wings is really the promise of transformation. Uh, and I wanted to share, this is the first piece of uh, content that they, that they ever made. And again, you'll see the promise of Red Bull uh, not dissimilar to uh, Sleeping Beauty, but with a twist. We talked about this a little bit too. Uh, they've become this media empire. And I think everything that they're doing in the media empire is in some way, some kind of transformation. It's some kind of way for you to get air, for some way for you to uh, look at your passions uh, and, um, uh, and, and, and see them writ large in, in, in this you know, incredible um, you know, media empire that they've, that they've created. And again, when you go deeper into their site, I mean, these are not just you know, typical things that beverage companies do. And these guys really have created a, a, a media empire. Uh, I think Simon had a really nice uh, analogy for this. They feel like a magazine. They, they have a magazine, but they literally feel like curators of this uh, action life. Uh, and uh, the energy drink itself is the, is the catalyst for your transformation. I mean, this is you know, not dissimilar to the cool Walt Disney slide. This is being writ large by Red Bull. And there's our friend Felix jumping from space. And it's an incredible uh, success uh, on, their, uh, on their endeavors. So impressive that they, we couldn't even fit them on this uh, slide here. OK, six is tragedy. Uh, and when we look at tragedy, uh, it's the story of a hero slide into darkness, usually resulting in some kind of demise. And uh, of course, we've seen this in Titanic and Black Swan. That was quite sad. Uh, and even Hamilton, that's, uh, you know, Alexander Hamilton's story is really a tragedy. Uh, what's interesting, I'm going to show you just kind of two interesting examples. Volvo used to sell tragedy. And you can see, uh, I'll show you a, a piece in a second where they're sort of off that. Uh, and then Allstate also sells on tragedy, even though it's quite funny. Um, what's interesting is that Volvo, we call it the story of life and death with an emphasis on life. This is what every piece of communication from Volvo used to be. It's a piece of advertising here, but everything that they did from the company was about tragedy. It was about uh, what would happen in a car accident. Um, where they are today is we don't know. And what I would tell you is that they're off their story. They're selling on, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's a sexy thing, maybe it's a style thing, maybe it's a cool car, but it's not their core story. And I think it's leading to some challenges for Volvo. On the flip side, with Allstate, uh, you know, they're going to show you, you know, the tragedy. It's done in a humorous way, but make no mistake, they're selling tragedies. When you look at what's happened with our friend Mayhem here, these are all things gone wrong. These are all tragedies uh, that they're just uh, doing in a very humorous way. So when you use tragedy for some brands, you, it's really about selling on fear. 
Interesting thing about Mayhem, though, he really connected, and uh, you know, he achieved in a year what it took uh, the, the 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 gecko and flow uh, a number of years. So again, the good stories people connect with. Last is comedy, um, and yeah, there's funny stuff like uh, uh, like our friends at The Hangover, uh, and there's a lot of funny things out there, whether it's Old Spice or Geico or Skittles or the Dollar Shave Club guy. Uh, what I want to talk about for a second here is that uh, a more intellectual take on comedy, which is using comedy as enlightenment. And I think a lot of great brands use comedy for enlightenment. Uh, in some ways, you could argue that uh, Puppy Monkey Baby enlightens you to three um, ingredients, but I may be stretching it here. Um, so Adobe's done an amazing job for a lot of years. Uh, they, it's the story of enlightenment in the world of marketing, communication, chaos, which is what we're all living in. So I thought I'd close here and just show you some of the things that Adobe's doing. Um, I love this. This is a very old school ad, but it's as timeless today as it was when it was written years ago. It's a declaration of independence on the left, and it says, how do you get feedback from 52 busy partners over the 4th of July weekends? <laughs> very funny. But they've kept the humorous tone, so let's just take a look again. Comedy as enlightenment. Peter, come take a look at this. This is Daniel. Mr. Daniels. Look at this. What's this. The numbers, they keep getting bigger and bigger. Clicks are off the charts. Yeah. Yoshi, it's Walter. We're back. Yes, sir! I... Number, 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 number. What the? What the? What the? Tracky! More shifting! More shifting! I need four three. Four trees! I'll get you more trees. Hey, take a look at Woodpulp. Whoa. Everything you got on Woodpulp right now. <laughs> she really loves that thing. <laughs> That's some great stuff done by uh, Goodby Silverstein. Um, and again, Adobe's really killing it. So just to recap quickly, uh, I know I breezed through pretty quick, but, I, but you guys are a smart audience. I can tell by your questions. Um, these are the seven stories. Overcoming the Monster, The Quest, Voyage in Return, Rags to Riches, Rebirth, Tragedy, and Comedy. And I promise you, if you're stuck on something, uh, Pick up one of these and see if you can write uh, your story against that. And I also promise you that any brand that's really connecting today has uh, one of these stories at the core of who they are. Just one last piece here. What's interesting, uh, this is uh, the 2015 most recent Interbrands Best Global Brands. What's amazing about this slide is that any box in white is a brand that when we worked on this presentation, we could not identify a story for them. But if I say to you, Oracle, I, I'm not sure you guys could come up with anything other than, oh, some of those ads at the airport I might ignore. You know, I don't know if Toyota's story is clear anymore. But the other brands that are really doing well on Interbrand uh, are all tied to, a, to a, uh, you know, a true evergreen story. So the brands we connect to have stories we connect with. And when you get stuck, ask yourself, what's your story? So what is your story? <laughs> uh, I don't want to get in trouble for going over and keeping you from a break. Um, my story would probably be uh, overcoming. Uh, yeah, I, I think you know our story is about disruption. So we're constantly looking at uh, overcoming the monster that is ordinary things. Uh, we just had a, a company offsite yesterday. And um, one, of the, one of the presenters uh, had an idea about kill boring. And uh, what I thought was very interesting, tying it back to what, the, what, what Simon shared, and even if you can tie it to REI, it's uh, let's produce great pieces that are, that, are, that are killing boring. We have time for one more question. As you were talking, uh, th thank you, by the way, really interesting set of examples. And it reminds me a bit of the sort of the Carl Jungian archetypes that, you know, and he's it, the, the, sort of the suggestion that, um, you know, these, these archetypes sort of resonate um, with people. And I was just curious about why, why do stories, in your mind, what's your sense of why stories are so powerful 
in, in terms of their ability to, to communicate about a brand? Well, first of all, it would not be a Yale conference without something called Jungian archetypes coming up uh, for conversation. <laughs> no. um, so I guess the question is, so why do I believe stories work? Um, I think, forget all of the intellectual pieces and let's forget all of the, um, the dopamine that flows when I say, oh, I got a story to tell you. Let's be very pragmatic. Now let's talk about the extreme fragmentation of the world today and just how many pipes we have trying to connect with people and how fragmented people are and how I'm basically the only thing between you and your phone. Uh, we need something to hold those all together and we need something to hold that attention. We need something that someone goes, oh wait, I, I want to be with this for, for, for the eight seconds that I'm going to outpace the goldfish on attention. I want to be with this. And usually that thing is a story. The, the stories can happen even in, in, in a GIF. So that's why. Anyway, thank you so much. You guys have been amazing.